hey everyone welcome back to my channel so today's video is so highly requested i'm so sorry it's been so delayed but this is for anyone who is trying to transition or maybe you've started and you're still a little lost and you still have some questions and of course uh, feel free to leave me any questions maybe something i didn't answer but i'm going to try and get everything all the knowledge all the information that i can give into this video and if anything i'll just do a part two so how to transition where do you start well the first thing you have to do you have to decide if you want to big chop or transition so pick which one you want to do pick which one you think you can handle um for me for those that don't know you can go watch my healthy hair journey video i'll link it below but i transitioned i um opted not to big chop just because i didn't think i would be ready for that and who knows if i would have or how i would have taken it but mo so much power and love to those girls who can big chop and literally a big chop what is a big chop it's basically when you cut off all your hair it's for technically you should just be cutting off the damaged hair but the reason it's called a big chop is because most women starting over they because they've damaged all their hair so you can do a big chop you can do a transition either way you just got to get rid of the damaged hair the next most important thing that you have to think about well you have to do this you have to do trust me you have to stop using heat you have to stop coloring your hair all this extraness <laughs> uh, you have to stop doing it and maybe you can get away with doing such a little further down the road but if you are just starting you have to stop using flat irons a uh, hot comb curling iron any of that stuff um box dye just stay away from these things for now okay it'll be important stay away from those things for now the next thing the products that you'll need so some stuff especially when you're first starting you don't need everything um most of you depending on your hair you might not even be able to do a wash and go and a wash and go is not the only option like this is a wash and go but it's not the only way that you can wear your hair um when i was transitioning i did a lot of buns and made sure they weren't too tight i did a lot of protective styles which i did braids i did jumbo braids which i'll never do jumbo braids again oh my god they were so heavy i couldn't even put like my hair in a ponytail by myself like i needed assistance to just to wrap like one huge scrunchie around so never again but your hair is protected and your hair does grow pretty fast because you're leaving it alone you're not doing anything with it just with certain protective styles though i will say you do have to still keep your scalp clean and stimulated so you make sure you're still cleansing it make sure you still are getting the oil that you need um so that goes to my next point you have to have a stimulated scalp it's the most important thing honestly besides moisture i feel like a stimulated scalp is the most important thing because to really transform our hair we need it to grow right let's be honest we need it to grow even if you are gradually transitioning like i did and you're gradually cutting off dead ends you still need your hair to grow from the root and what's on the root that's where our scalp is so you need to keep it clean you can so i use a sulfate free shampoo you can totally use a sulfate shampoo it's just be prepared that that's really going to strip all the moisture so just be ready to add conditioner right after depending on how you want to do it so let me get on to tell you how i do it so this is what a wash day is going to look like i'm transitioning still this is what a wash day is going to look like first i'm going to add the conditioner disclaimer I do this now but when i started i would wash first but if i could go back i would switch i used to wash then deep condition now i deep condition and wash and i would if i could go back i would switch so you can try both ways see which one you like more i almost guarantee you're gonna like conditioning first so add your conditioner and then shampoo and then add a leave-in those are the three steps that are so crucial in transitioning and just keeping moisture in your hair if you don't do anything after that that's fine however you want to style it maybe you just want to put it in a bun right you don't need gels and curl creams and extra oils and mousse and all that if you're just going to put it in a bun or maybe even just simple braids just make sure you add some leave-in conditioner because that's the moisture your hair will not grow if it's not moisturized so dry hair won't grow I'm, I'm sorry it just won't that's why it's important to consistently deep condition because you're putting in that moisture and you need to get you a good deep conditioner go check my other video on products i recommend and i do have another one coming i promise i might even do it right now i'm gonna film it right after this products that i know are amazing not just products like i'm trying out or i have on my wall thing if you've seen but products that i know are amazing so you need to get you a good deep conditioner a shampoo i mean mm, you're not really gonna go wrong just if you want sulfates get sulfates they're not bad i know like you'll see my post it says sulfate free um it's not because they're bad it's just they're not i don't like to use that word bad but they're not for my hair okay if i want my hair to be stripped then i'm going to clarify which goes to my next thing you need to clarify your hair 
if you're especially if you are doing wash and go so like me and you're using like three and four products or even just one and two however many products you're still adding product that's staying in your hair throughout the week or until your next wash day so about i would say about every it depends on your hair type which i'll get in a, a little bit but i would say at least once a month if you could do it maybe even twice a month and <laughs> Clarifying is just really, really, really important for your hair so that your hair doesn't just like get product buildup. Um, you'll know you need to clarify if the products you're using stopped working. So like if you know these products work and then they stop working, like I just clarified my hair the other day. I did it like two days ago and it was a fail and I was like, why are my products working? But then like, duh, I haven't clarified and like, I don't even know. Cause even sometimes I forget. Um, so I try and make sure. So that's the easy, you can tell. If you feel like your hair just isn't looking right, you need to clarify, okay? And how do you clarify? Apple cider vinegar, it's in my guide. You can do, oh, I'm sorry. The apple cider vinegar is not in my guide, but it will be soon in my new guides. Um, in my guide right now, I have the clay mask way to do it, which is fine. They both work fine. Um, they both look really good in my opinion, but to me, the clay mask is really, really messy and it can clog your drain. You just gotta, you gotta be careful with that, but it is really beneficial. And I know a lot of naturals actually prefer it. For me, what I like to do is just do an apple cider vinegar rinse. Um, I'll do a whole other video on clarifying. Trust me, I know it's coming. I'll do it right, well, I won't do it right now. I'll do it later, but I will do it. But with the apple cider vinegar, all you're gonna do is take a spray bottle, half apple cider vinegar, half water, shake it up, shake it up. Just literally spray all over your hair. Be careful it doesn't get in your eyes. It will burn, it will burn. So just if you like, if you're in the shower, and for me, so I'll spray it all over, and then whatever I have extra, I just pour, and then sometimes it'll come down my face, and you just gotta be careful. Keep your eyes cl uh, closed so it doesn't burn. So when, uh, when you clarify, either way, clarify immediately when you rinse out, you need deep condition, okay? After you clarify, you need to deep condition every time. I don't care, every time, every, every time every time okay um so yes clarifying simulating scalp and moisture so moisture like i said that's deep conditioning those are the things you need to focus on i know you guys hmm you probably think it's a lot to it and there is a lot to hair but it doesn't have to be as complicated as it seems i have all these products right do i need them no all right next i'm gonna talk about materials that you have to get and then I'm going to talk about ones that you can get that are beneficial, but you don't have to have them. So the ones that you absolutely, I think you need to have, a diffuser. I mean, if you like to air dry your hair, that's cool, but I just know you're going to need a diffuser one of these days. You're going to. Air drying takes like, well, it depends your hair, but it takes so much longer. Um, unless you like walking around with wet hair. I don't. So you need a diffuser. You'll need clips. So when you're styling your hair, especially if you do wash and goes, you're going to need these clips. They're called like uh, crop clips. I think that's what they're called okay next you need a spray bottle that's the one thing like i need i need multiple i have like three you need a spray bottle when you're styling your hair a spray bottle is everything i wish i would have had one when i was younger would have made a lot a lot of things easier you need a towel head wrap okay just like the little towel you wrap it um if you got the shower just whenever your hair is wet those things are importante i have like five just so when ones you know they're all dirty i try to always have one um so as far as like brushes i would personally recommend a demon brush I would but you don't have to have it i know not everybody likes it um a wide tooth comb you'll probably need that for detangling some people like to style with it some type of comb some type of comb that's not too small right like the regular like fine tooth combs you don't need that not for styling your hair you will need oh well you'll need a pillowcase or a bonnet maybe both i used to use both for a while are they necessary to use both hmm probably not if you have a bonnet you don't really need a pillowcase i don't really i don't sleep with a bonnet anymore because my hair is too long, it kind of just smushes it, it makes it worse. But I do sleep on a silk pillowcase. Doo -doo -doo. Okay, and things that you might, might need. Um, a steamer. I do have a handheld steamer or maybe a heat cap. So if you have low porosity hair, which I'm about to get into, if you have low porosity hair, you do want to use heat when you're deep conditioning because it's harder for your hair to get moisture. Low porosity hair has like a barrier. It doesn't want to get wet. It doesn't want moisture. So it's difficult. So I would suggest get a heat cap or you know some type of steamer um and then other products that aren't like a necessity like i was saying mousse gel curl creams these are kind of extra you don't need them need them but if you do want to style your hair like say you're trying to get this look yeah you'll need them and even extra oils um you don't have to have it but extra oils i always have oils around to add to my deep conditioner to do scalp massages it's really really good to have your favorite oils and some of my favorites i like avocado sunflower um jojoba um lavender to name a few castor oil black castor oil 
um okay now to get into porosity so i'll have a different video how to find your porosity i know you guys are so tired of me saying that but i can't have everything in one but what after you find out your hair porosity it's going to be low medium or high and then you're going to know how to take care of your hair so i just told you about low hair low porosity um you need to use heat you need to use protein free products low porosity hair does not like protein if you're so if my hair type which everybody asks so i have medium to high mostly high which means my hair gets really frizzy and it does take moisture easy but it loses it easily and it's just so true um so for me it's important to really seal in the moisture i like to use an oil for my wash and goes and use uh, heavy creams remember you guys leave any questions because i know i'm talking about a live road stuff down but <laughs> i could easily have left stuff out i could always do a part two to this so just let me know <laughs> oh pre-poo does that really help yeah it does i don't do it as much often um but when i was starting yeah it really helps you, when you're first starting let me just say to wrap up this video when you are first starting transitioning it's really important that you actually follow most of the steps you know it's not like if you skip deep conditioning all the time like what are you really expecting as a result if you're not you know adding moisture correctly to your hair what are you going to really expect you know so you have to have the goal in mind okay have patience i know it takes a while it's not gonna happen overnight even for myself i think I, I am pretty blessed i feel like my hair grows at a you know a moderate rate but you know it took me a whole year i transitioned for a whole year i was gradually cutting off my ends until they were all all the dead ends were gone all the straight ends and that's when i went and got my first haircut and i've just been growing my hair out ever since so i am now almost four years in so just so you know it has been a journey um you just have to stay encouraged just know the goal once you get your hair healthy and you learn how to take care of it ooh, think how good good spot you'll be in right you don't have to worry about like a lot of things <laughs> you know for me i had to stop worrying about like oh my god i gotta go flat iron my hair oh i can't work out because i'm not gonna sweat like all that that is for the birds that's some other time i'm you know I highly encourage you. I highly encourage you. If you're on the fence and you're like, is transitioning really going to work? Just try. Try. I promise you. So many people have told me like they went natural because they saw me do it. And now they're so happy. I just feel like it's just so much of a stress reliever. Um, I don't really stress about my hair as much. I still stress about my hair. Don't let, I still do. But in a different kind of way. I just, you know, now my hair is healthy. It grows. I don't have to worry about like, I don't have to worry about, oh, I need new clipping extensions. Um, my flat iron broke. I need a new one. Um, you know, any of this stuff. I think transitioning teaches you a lot. It definitely humbled me. <laughs> you know, after a while, like, yeah, I did protect protective styles and buns, but I just started rocking my hair. I didn't care. Um, it just made me feel good about myself if I'm being completely honest. So I want you all to feel that. So if you're on the fence, tell me why. Why? What else? What do I need to tell you to encourage you to do it? You know, what else? So I hope this video helped. I know I rambled. <laughs> just let me know anything I need else I need to answer. Um, yeah. So thanks for watching.